tell us more. Yeah, let's jump straight in then, shall we? So starting at 50% for series completion, you will get Horizon Backstage Pass. Now, as we know, you can use that to redeem a cars that are in the Horizon Backstage. Make sure you go and vote for the cars you want there. At 80%, we have the Fiat Dino. And then moving on to summer at 50%, the Lexus RCF and the beautiful LaFerrari at 80%. For our photo challenge, we have hashtag Ambleside Advent, where you have to take a photo of your car in Ambleside. Now, you might notice there is a uh, T-Rex peeking in the background there. Uh, we'll leave it there. We might come back to that later, but just keep an eye out for that and we'll come back to that. Great, moving on. Um, you have the chance to get the HSV GTSR as well as some other cool stuff. But going to our first new exclusive car it is the Fiat X19. We'll be talking about that later in the stream, but you can win that by completing the above on the half seasonal championship in summer. Moving on to autumn, at 50%, you'll be getting the Formula Drift uh, 777 Corvette and at 80%, the awesome Ken Block race suit. We also have a uh, brand new weekly Forza Fon, the Gymkhana Special. It's built around the Gymkhana 9 Ford Focus RS RX. Uh, for our photo challenge as well, take a photo of any extreme off-road car at the Express North Rail Yard. And a great some, uh, a chance here to get the Holden VL Group A in the Flexion Muscle Trial, and we're bringing a showcase remix back where you have the Camaro versus the train. But we have a brand new exclusive car again here. This is the Hoonigan Bronco, and we'll be talking about that later. But you can get that by completing the Ken Block and Roll Seasonal Championship in Awesome. It's a really, really fun car to drive, so make sure you check that out. Moving on to winter, at 50%, you could get the Volkswagen Notchback, and at 80%, the Toyota GT86. For a photo challenge, it's hashtag old acquaintance, and you've got to take a photo of your car with another player or driver in Edinburgh. Make sure you put these with the hashtag on social media. We love seeing the things that you create. And a chance here to get the Porsche 356 and the Happy New Year trial. And we're bringing another, the Showcase Remix back, which has you playing in Aisha's Taxi against the Bayer Moth as well, in Ride to Anywhere. But the Koenigsegg Yesco is here, and you can win that in the Let It Snow Seasonal Championship. This is a car we are so, so excited to bring to Forza Horizon 4, and we cannot wait to talk about that later on in the stream. So, and at 50%, we have another new car, and that is the Alfa Romeo 155, and at 80%, the Bugatti Devo. The photo challenge is hashtag Ken Blockbuster, and you've got to take a photo of any Hoonigan car. And what's great about this one is the only restriction is the car, so you can take this anywhere uh, in the game and have a lot of fun with that one. Uh, again, another chance here to win the Hoonigan Porsche in a retro racing green trial. And last but not least, a whole other uh, load of cars there. We've got uh, things like the Porsche 718, the Hoonigan Escort, and uh, also the Klenbock, Klen, Ken Block helmet, which uh, goes very nicely with the, um, the suit you saw in winter. Uh, your screen, but the monthly rivals will have you racing in the Koenigsegg Yesco as well. So yeah, really, really exciting stuff. So as we're actually live right now, a little bit of a, a novelty to be having some live gameplay. I think we should have a up close and personal look at some of those reward cars. So you just mentioned the Koenig's like Yesco. So let's should we look straight at that one? Have a little, yeah, have a little tour. <laughs> yeah, so here we are in Forza Vista. Yeah, so, so exciting to have this car in the game. Uh, this was unveiled at the Geneva International Motor Show in 2019, and it's the successor to the Ajira RS. So it's kind of taken all the things that made the Ajira great, but improved on that as well. So we've got a redesigned 5-litre twin-turbo V8 engine, and that actually produces um, different brake horsepower depending on the uh, type of fuel you use. So if you're using standard gasoline, you'll get about 12 uh, 1,280 brake horsepower, but if you use um, E85 biofuel, you will get uh, 1,600 brake horsepower. So it, there's an incentive for you. You know, if you mm. want to do things better for the environment, you will get a faster car, which is really cool. Um, what I love about this as well is it's it's road legal. It's it's like you would you would look at this kind of thing, how? But yeah, it is, and it's an absolutely beautiful car. Um, this was actually named after the father of the CEO of Koenigsegg, it's called Yesco. So the fact that the name was, um, there's so much behind the name, you, you can just tell there's going to be so much love that is poured into um, 
record into this car. So yeah, really exciting. Um, another cool thing about this is it's got um, a new nine-speed Koenigsegg light-speed transmission. And what cars have done pr uh, prior to this is when you want to go from, say, gear two through step-by-step, step, whereas the, um, the ESCO actually predicts the best gear for the player to go into um, as you're driving and automatically goes there. So it's, it's kind of a real synergy of the car and the driver talking to one another to get the most power um, which I think is really, really cool and shows how um, engineering art uh, can come together to create such mm -hmm. a cool car. The future. Um, and uh, as we said, this is unlocked at 50% uh, in winter as well. So, um, yeah, super, it super is, fun. Yeah, it's an absolute stunner. And as you can see, it is ridiculously fast. But <laughs> exceptional grip as well. It's actually um, quite drivable. I mean, I'm probably going to crash it in a moment. But it's, <laughs> um, Don't jinx it. More drivable than some of the other high performance uh, Kona exec. And I guess that comes from the fact you mentioned that it is actually road legal. Uh, yeah. And it, it feels like you probably wouldn't drive it like this on a public road normally, but um, it, you know, it does, it does feel like it handles okay. Yeah. As I say, you probably want to avoid crashing the central reservation like I just did, but um, <laughs> under normal circumstances, it is quite a good performance racing car. Yeah, it's super exciting. And it has a bunch of cup holders, which we noticed earlier. Does, so, you know, style and I'm substance. I'm, I'm driving. I can't it's get got everything. View, yes, but from Forza Vista, you can <laughs> see that it is well equipped with beverage holders. <laughs> <laughs> it's all that matters. <laughs> Um, so, a second reward car that we've mentioned is the 1975 Fiat X19. So, uh, yeah, should let's we jump into that. Have a look at that. Look at, look at us, like, live jumping into the car. It's great. I know, it's so exciting. <laughs> and it's so it's speedy so cool. as well. Exactly, we can load into these cars in just a couple of seconds. Plug. Yeah, so this is the... The uh, 1975 Fiat X19, not quite as fast. Not quite as fast, but it's still very, very cool. It's got pop-up headlights, which we love. Uh, it's, so this one has uh, around 61 brake horsepower, so it's very, very different to the other one. Um, but what's really cool about this, and we should probably jump back into Forza Vista, actually, is the, the engine is uh, in the middle. And um, what's great about that is it allow, uh, allows the, the weight distribution to be evenly spaced between the rear and the front of the car, um, so you get... A lot of uh, great balance nice. on that. So it's look. not there where you might have thought it would be. It's actually here. It's actually here. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> With boot <laughs> space as space. well. It's a super practical car. Yeah. Given, given how, <laughs> how teeny it is, you've got, you've got storage here. Get some golf clubs in there. You've got space here for a picnic basket. Exactly. Oh, uh, what lovely. I love about this as well is the uh, it's actually got a target top that can be taken off and put into the, uh, the bonnet. In, in real life so yeah super super practical great job fit yeah um all the way back in 1975 <laughs> they were they had they had solutions to the problems yeah it's great built for the british uh, yeah day so out. this can be this can be unlocked <laughs> uh, by completing the abaf on the half uh, championship in summer cool great uh, what's the next um, one yeah, no, that looks, uh, just going to see if we're going to get back on the road or if we want to um, oh, yeah, move sure, on yeah, to the we'll next reward car. Let's, let's take it to the drag ship, yeah. All right, all right, it might take us a little yeah. while to get there. It's not as quick as... <laughs> see her in action. <laughs> <laughs> Set your reminder for five minutes. <laughs> it's trying its best. <laughs> so the notes I have here said so it has a maximum of 110 miles per hour. Um, I don't think we'll hit that here. I doubt. I... <laughs> You might, you might need, hit might the I, I believe. You might need 70. You might hit 70. <laughs> go, go. <laughs> come on, come on, little car. Go on. Just give it your, your best belief. Three. There you go. So, 76. So, so this one is a, a really cool Alpha. It, it marked the, um, the first car that Alpha produced after they were purchased by Fiat. Um, and some versions of this car, in fact, most versions of this car, people didn't like that much because it was a change for Alfa. Instead of being rear wheel drive, they switched to front wheel drive and people felt that that was kind of a, a betrayal of the Alfa DNA. This version though uh, is all wheel drive, um, which doesn't have that problem. Uh, it's got a two, two, uh, a two liter turbo engine. It makes about 190 horsepower for a top speed of about 140 miles an hour. Um, it was also appeared in a few different racing series or at least a, a version of it did. In fact, I'll jump over to the festival to uh, talk about that a little more um, because it appeared in British touring cars and I think the Italian touring cars that meant that it had to be homologated so they had to make a uh, road legal version of the the racing car 
Uh, and because of that, it has a, cool, a, a couple of really awesome body kits. Um, so you can jump in here. So if you bought the car uh, in one of these homologated versions of it, it would have come looking pretty much like you see here. Um, and then in a separate box, they would have handed you uh, a body kit um, that you could then go and have it attached to yourself. Um, so I think that is the, that's the Italian one, isn't it? That's the uh, separate, that's cool. the Italian touring cars. Is that one? It's got a really big splitter on the front, a really gnarly looking splitter on the back, a little uh, box around the exhaust as that's well. So cool. Um, for the BTCC, it was this one, I believe, which again looks pretty darn cool. Um, you stick a wing on there as well. Again, choice of wings. I think it's that one that goes with this kit. Um, I'll go buy it. Um, yeah. Nice little, nice little bump in performance there, and the car suddenly looks a heck of, heck of a lot. Looks cooler. really cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like a new car. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that, that is just great how some, sometimes the body kits can just can be completely transformative. Uh, they can take a yeah. car that looks like a you know, kind of reason, reasonably performant executive saloon car that you might see out on the road to uh, an actual track beast. Yeah. Um, so what was it, 75 that we did in the Fiat? But, um, I, you'll be able to yeah. beat that now, well, I reckon. 76. Yeah, I we'll 75 before we even Let's get be to fair. that. <laughs> <laughs> you did upgrade it, yeah. <laughs> Oh, already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Easy. Easy, 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 easy. Easy. Not quite. 95, <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, where do you want this one, Dave? I, I forget, is it spring? Uh, it is spring, yes, 50%. 50% in spring gets you the, the Alpha 155 along with those body kits. Again, awesome car, um, really. Really, really great engine. Really, really nice yeah. for, its, for its time as well. You know, that not to 16 around about six seconds. Top speed of 140. You know, pretty, pretty, pretty decent performing car to think that it came out in like 92. So, yeah. yeah. Unless you, you know, like me, you'd think the 90s were just 10 years ago still. But what? Don't tell me that they weren't, Leah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, right, and finally, in a as bit, promised, but now we... I really want to know more about Super 7, and I'm sure you guys do as well. So have a little look at this. straight from you guys what is super seven well yeah i mean the, there is there is quite a bit to show there's quite a lot to take in i think in that little trailer um, <laughs> yeah, it might bit. be easier if we if we show you uh, rather than tell you so i'm gonna hand over to dave and dave can start start us on the, the tour of this feature of which there are quite a few parts to try and take in yes so as part of this feature you can create your own challenges and share them with your friends so i'm going to do that now you can create a challenge anywhere on the road network you that through the post menu or in free room um and at this point, you have a selection of different challenge types that you can make. So um, we're going to go for a speed trap one because we're on the motorway. It feels quite cool. We're in the ESCO, so let's go for that. Um, I'm going to set this uh, speed trap here. Um, so the ESCO is, is great. It's probably not the best to drive in winter, even though you can unlock it in winter. And uh, I think, <laughs> who put that there? <laughs> Maybe me. Maybe me. And, um, so we're going to change it to summer. And, and at this point, when you're making your challenge, you can really customize the, uh, the kind of ex experience you want just through these settings here. So um, I'm going to go turn off traffic and uh, go from there. 
At this point, it's going to ask me to uh, select some music. Now, something I think is is really cool with the way we have you know such a, a wide range of music is you can really match the music to the gameplay. So we're driving a fast car. It's a speed trap. Uh, looking. So hospital records, drum and bass feels good. Uh, I love this song, Caffeine by Urban Dawn. Uh, it kind of perfectly sums up the experience that I want mm -hmm. to create. So at this at this point, I am uh, I'm now going to be setting the score for my uh, my challenge card. So um, let's do that now. So at this point, I um, I drive to the uh, the speed trap that I've just set, and the score that I I hit will be the um, score for the challenge that other people will play mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So um, where are we? Let's do that now. So as you can see, we changed season. Um, it's just a lovely little speed trap. I mean, this is lovely, Dave, but where's all lovely, the dinosaurs yeah. and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> so we've, we've seen this before, right? We've seen this before. We've, we've done speed challenges before. Come on, give us something. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Let's do it again. Right. So, what we've done is we've added a new tool called Blueprint Builder, and what that does at the press of a button is I can detach the camera from the car and sort of fly around the world, adding stunts, scenery, and objects to my challenge. Yes. For example. <laughs> I can now <laughs> add, if I want to, I can add a ramp, um, which instantly changes the experience, makes it more interesting and fun. Uh, I have the option to uh, sort of increase the height or decrease the height. I can rotate it, I can pitch it. If I ever get lost, I can just hit the right stick and it will reset it back to where it was. So it's, um, let's add this jump here, maybe just slightly further away from the, uh, the, uh, the bollards there. <laughs> um, and I want to direct people into this, so I'm just going to put it some uh, some chevrons to tell the player, hey, this is a ramp, go into it. So <laughs> Just in case what we it. want players to do is... Um, <laughs> game design and action there, folks. Game design and action, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so what I'm doing now is I'm actually test driving the things that I've added. So there's no time limit, and I'm free to go in and out of Blueprint Builder as much as possible. And here you go. I've just jumped over a ramp that was never there before. This is a Forza first. I've gone into the world, and I've added a ramp, and I've just driven over it. So really, really cool stuff. And I think, just to make this a bit more exciting as well, let's give... Uh, let's add a bit of sort of a bit of a, a weaving challenge to this as well. So I'm gonna okay. make a left. So, so while you and set that a... up, I've got a few this questions is... while you set that up. Um, so this is you. You're setting up your own challenge right now, your custom challenge. Um, but why, why is it called Super Seven? Yes. Okay. So I'll, I'll take that one. So. Um, this is the challenge creator where any player can come in and just set themselves up a custom challenge. They can share that with their friends using the share code system. It will automatically get, it'll appear in other people's worlds, which we'll, again, we'll take a look at in just a moment. But uh, all of these challenges that players create then feed into uh, a feature that's called the Super 7, uh, which is almost like a gauntlet of challenges that you have to take on where you have to complete seven challenges back to back. And if you can, can complete those seven community created challenges, then you'll get an awesome exclusive reward. Um, Amazing. Dave here showing off the, uh, the cloning feature. <laughs> yes, um, yeah, the cloning feature with the T-Rex. So I, I told dinosaurs. you. I told you the T-Rex. <laughs> You're going to get sued by Universal. <laughs> Wait a second. Stop the stream. Um, so, uh, yeah, so it's, it's really easy to just kind of make another instance of, of what you're creating. So if I wanted to create another dinosaur, I hit Y and it just um, creates another instance of that dinosaur. So here we have a, a, a lovely quartet chorus of T-Rexes in the challenge, because why wouldn't you do that? And I mean, it'll really yeah. increase the, the sensation of speed, Dave. Yes, and exactly. it'll of course, make you yeah. want to go faster, so, so you don't and get fear. Eaten, eaten by um, a T-Rex. Exactly. And I noticed you're putting these dinosaurs down, but it's not actually adding to your budget at the top, which is quite interesting. You've got six dinosaurs yeah, so the, now. <laughs> yeah, so the, um, the way the budget works, obviously there is a, a hard limit of memory. Um, and so everything you do add will increase the, the prop budget, sometimes by a lot, sometimes not by a lot. So if you ever add the, uh, another instance of the same object, it's actually uses your budget a, a lot less, which is why you're seeing it not go up. Yeah, so uh, the first T-Rex would have been a, a reasonable chunk. Mm -hmm. Every subsequent T-Rex is not very much at all. So yeah. if you're wanting to build mm. a big structure out of ramps, then you know, re reusing the same asset multiple times is a very efficient way to do that. Yeah, I'd say for people who are making challenges, that is the most efficient way to get more bang for buck is to use um, a smaller set of, uh, of props and you can go take them uh, sort of a lot further. Um, let's add my go-to uh, T-Rex Ferris <laughs> wheel combo. <A> classic. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I, I pretty much put this in every challenge, just like my signature. There you go. <laughs> your, your calling card. That is, that is it, yeah. You know you just made by me when there's T-Rex on a fit and Ferris wheel. Um, so whenever I'm done happy with it, I, I have to set a new score for my challenge, and that's just to prove that what I've made is actually can, can be completed. Um, I'm going to let Mike do that, so... Oh, okay. But okay. This is now a, Fingers this, crossed. This is now a review of Dave's challenge here. I'll be this assessing is a, out whether or not it's fun. <laughs> the stamp we'll of approval. In a, in a phrase, in a this is a live peer review right now. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. So at, at this point, uh, Mike is, is setting the score for his, his challenge card there. Okay. Um, the, these uh, kind of archways are a really good way of um, guiding the player towards like checkpoints if you want to maybe go slightly further away from the charging line. Yeah, quite a few player experience tools there, haven't you, that you've added in just to help guide people, as you say, which is nice. For people to play exactly. with. Exactly. And there you go, so you set a speed of 251 miles per hour. So at this point, when you're happy with it, you could, re you could set a new score if you wanted to. Uh, you have to give it a, a cool name. Um, I'm going to call it Dino Dash, Dave. Dino Dash. Okay. That was a good one. Because <laughs> there are dinosaurs. Um, <laughs> and so here you can see kind of a, a brief snapshot of the challenge card that you've created. And you can see it's actually talking to created the player and you automatic take part. Take in this in case, is why they're both the same. Um, <laughs> so when you're making your challenge, dress your character up. Um, I've got the chicken suit at the moment. That's kind of yes. rocking that. So every challenge is the chicken suit. And uh, yeah, so it, it's. And going back to what you're saying about the whole deliver uh, presence to Edinburgh, it changes a destination drive into into an experience, and I, I think that's something we're we're sort of keen to look out for um, when people make challenges, is to really think about what kind of what kind of experience you're crafting. And um, here it's kind of a very fast but fun um, race to do a speed trap, but it's uh, adding some dinosaurs in there because <laughs> because that's what you do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so, so how would you, how would a player find a challenge and, and take part in that challenge? Yeah, so there are, there are multiple ways to, uh, to find challenges. Um, they're actually going to be added to player's world in the free room. I don't know if we can open the map and have a look. Um, so when you play the game, you, you'll start to see your world being populated with challenges that are made by your friends. Maybe they're new stuff, maybe they're stuff that's really cool. Uh, you can see one I've just made. It's very hard. I would not recommend playing that one. <laughs> <laughs> I made it too hard. That's one thing, actually, I, I would recommend is to add a bit more time to your challenge when you're making it. So um, that's always a really nice way to make a challenge. Uh, uh, All right, quite so fun. I'm, I'm going to jump into this one by Aid the Terrible. He's one of our UI artists. He is. Haven't played this before. Could, could be anything. <laughs> he is good at making challenges. He is good at making challenges. So let's complete um, the Jim Carner course and nail a big finish. All right, Aid, let's see what you've got for us. Yeah. Sounds exciting. So, so every time you load the game, these will just be scattered around your world, and you can go and just drive up to them and see what they are. And so just so far, we've, we've had a few people already in playing the game. We've had a lot of people on the team playing it. Um, it's just it's just really surprising each yeah. time. You never know you never quite know what you're gonna get. Sometimes it's pretty awful, but a lot of the time uh, it's really, really exciting and interesting because well here you go. What AIDS done for us now. Jump here we go. distance, okay. Right. Right, so it's kind of an obstacle course. I mean straight away you can see how convoluted it can get <laughs> immediately. I'm sure people's <laughs> brains are like the cogs are turning right now, like, hmm, okay. I think when I make a challenge, I, I will just always have to add a T-Rex. I, I, uh, even if it's just the distance, I just have to add a T-Rex. The signature. <laughs> so here's, is oh. that, here's a danger sign. So, what have I got? 114. Oh, oh yes, right there. there you go. All right. Uh, so these will um, be added to your world, but there's, a, there's another way to play a challenge as well, and that's through the uh, Super 7. So. Yeah. Why don't we uh, yes. take a look at that, the titular Super 7, the thing we've been talking about all the way through. 